What's up guys, back with another video and No Rest for the Wicked looks phenomenal. It has shot up to my most anticipated of this year and the game has just recently had its Wicked showcase going through the various gameplay systems. So in today's video, it's going to be a little bit different. Instead of my full scripted videos, we're just going to have a general thoughts and discussion on what we saw in the Wicked showcase. The game looks amazing and without further ado, let's get into it. First off, if you haven't seen No Rest for the Wicked, it is an action RPG but with brutal precision based combat. It basically think Diablo or PoE but with Souls-like combat. So No Rest for the Wicked comes from Moon Studios who previously worked on the Ori games, a really well received games in the Metroidvania space. So they did very well with the Metroidvania genre and they're looking to now do that in the action RPG space. So starting off with the Wicked showcase we got a general overview of the story and our place within the world. No Rest for the Wicked is set in 841 after King Harrow is dead and he is to be succeeded by his young untested son Magnus. But during all this it is foretold that the great plague known as the pestilence is going to come back. A member of the church sees this as an opportunity to prove her worth. This is where your character comes in so you are part of a group to investigate the pestilence. You are ambushed and washed ashore on the isle and this is where your journey begins. So we can already get an idea that the story is going to be grim, it's going to be dark and I'm all about it. Next up we got a look at the world. Nothing is procedurally generated. Uh, taking a shot at other companies out there that's some, that's some bold moves but that's Good to see. So No Rest for the Wicked's world is designed to be not flat, dense, interactive and a lot of emphasis on verticality. No Rest for the Wicked's world has been hand painted by artists and every part has been handcrafted by designers. So a lot of great looking areas with day and night cycles, dynamic weather systems and there's no just random stuff done in the world. It's just all been meticulously designed by a designer um, which is great. So every part of the world is going to feel meaningful. The devs emphasize the controls are not point and click, more focusing on using a controller or the WASD on a keyboard. In the world of No Rest for the Wicked, you'll be picking up a lot of loot. Uh, so that is the that is the main thing in ARPGs, you'll be getting a whole bunch of loot. But they have said that this loot is randomized, so this ensures that each player has a unique experience with their loot journey. But now speaking of the loot and the gear, we have our next section of the showcase which highlights combat, gear and stats. So combat is a heavy focus for No Rest for the Wicked, but instead of your usual ARPG combat, it's heavier, it's animation driven, and it's every swing counts. Uh, they're not saying it, but everyone's thinking it. So I was like combat. I mean, which is not a bad thing. I think it's fantastic, but maybe they just want to avoid that label, because uh, they didn't mention Souls like combat at any point in that showcase, I don't think. So each weapon has their own unique moveset and stats are driven by RNG. It also has a parry system allowing to have openings, the things that you'd usually expect in a parry based combat system, uh, which is great. I love the great parrying system. Liza P nailed it and I'm hoping No Rest for the Wicked does that as well. Then they went on to explain the loot system in No Rest for the Wicked. So loot in No Rest for the Wicked is split into four different color rarities. First off you've got your white, which is generally overlooked in other ARPGs as useless kind of trash. But Wicked is looking to change that. Uh, so I'm thinking that white can be various enchantments and stuff can be applied to it the most. Next we have the blue rarity which is rare items and they offer only positive enchantments. Next is the purple which has very positive enchantments but also paired with a curse. So it's going to be sort of balanced out. It will have more positive effects but then they'll also come with the curse. So risk reward when it comes to the purple stuff. And finally we have the gold items which are unique items crafted specifically by designers that offer unique enchantments. These will probably be the very powerful weapons throughout the game but it's good that they're not throwing away that white category completely and sort of making that useful for players as well for customization. But the other thing they mentioned is weapons can sometimes drop with its own unique runes. These can be extracted from the weapon and applied to other weapons creating unique movesets. So for example you could pick up a two-handed axe that might drop with its own rune. You can then apply that to maybe some daggers. I don't know if that'll work very well, but uh, you get the general idea of how that works. To use rune attacks, you need focus, which is gained during combat and wicked, which is the orange bar over your health in the top left corner. So combat has various different layers. So you've got, you've got the weapon choices, you have the move sets that can be transferred from one weapon to another, depending on if you have the rune for that weapon. You can also get various enchantments that impact your playstyle even more. The next thing they mentioned is the weight that affects your mobility options. So armor has various design and attributes contributing to things such as weight, affecting player mobility and how you would move around in that world. So lighter gear allows for quick steps that don't use much stamina and then medium gear has a roll that uses a bit more stamina and is a bit slower. And heavy gear isn't mentioned but I'm guessing if you do have heavy gear those movesets 
aren't available to you, so you're going to be a bit harder to move around. So you have to rely more on the parry system. And no rest for the wicked doesn't stop there. Uh, they also have no class system. They're going for a soft class system, which means that you don't have to lock into a specific class. So instead, you can swap out weapons as you will, and you're not locked in for one type of class throughout that whole entire playthrough of no rest for the wicked. And of course the combat will give the player melee focus options and magic focus options. So you've got the item uniqueness, you've got the enchantments, you've got the randomized loot, you've got the soft class system. So it allows for a lot of replayability and uh, unique runs. So next up we got a look at the bosses and enemies within No Rest for the Wicked. So of course the world is dark, it's grim, it's brutal, and so are the enemies. Uh, but there's various enemies called the Torn, which I assume are affected by the pestilence. Uh, so these are just people that have been mutated for good or for worse and we saw one of the bosses it looks like your scary boss fight that you're going to be that's going to be a good skill check for the game we did get various looks at some enemies mostly it seemed like soldiers that have been affected by the pestilence we did see a few other creatures but um didn't go into too much detail looks like there's going to be various different enemy types which is good we also got a sneak peek that the boss is uh very vulnerable to fire so remember that when you get into the game yourself Next up, they talked about Sacrament, which is the town of this isle, or the capital, and it is basically the hub for the player, where they can come and go from, but it also gives a lot of options to the player. It gives the option to help rebuild the place over time, offering interaction, input, and being able to invest resources into the town. Some resource gathering examples, it showed fishing, which is great, and uh, cutting down some trees. Didn't show too much else, apart from that resource gathering, but you can put that into the town, and I guess build it up build out your shops, build out um, other people you would interact with in the game. And also one other thing that looks very good is you can purchase your own property. It offers you the ability to stash items in that property, but also has its own customization, allowing you to place furniture and make that place your own. And one, one cool thing that I noticed is that most furniture placement systems you know, rely on a grid. This has no grid whatsoever, so you can customize your own area to look very unique. Uh, items can be placed whenever, wherever, and uh, yeah, some cool, unique designs that we've seen here. So yeah, it looks like Sacrament will evolve over time. Um, as you get further and further in this game, it's going to become, you know, you're going to see more shopkeepers, you're going to see more people that can help you out on your journey. So it's good that they're investing in that part of it as well. So after your big journeys throughout the world, you can come back to a place where you can sort of relax and uh, play around with your furniture, if you like. Now next up, they went through the in-game features. So in most ARPGs, there is some form of heavy in-game system. POE people, I'm looking at you. No Rest for the Wicked has a traditional campaign, as you'd expect, but there is one other system called the Alive system. So previously visited areas can change over time. For example, you might come back to an area that you have went to in the first few hours of the game, um, but you might come back to it later on, and you'll find that it's been inhabited by a different enemy type. They might find different loot, uh, different items, and sort of just incentivizes players to come back to areas. Not sure how that will evolve over time, not sure how, how much you'd repeatedly want to come back to an area, but we'll see how that goes. And they haven't said much else about the other in-game systems, but they did mention there is a crucible, which allows players to face the toughest enemies within the game. But they did not touch on more than that, so uh, I think they're going to hold that for a while until the game comes out. And finally, they got into the release date that we're all looking forward to. No Rest for the Wicked is going into early access on Steam, April the 18th. And then they went on to go into the roadmap for the No Rest for the Wicked and what they're looking to do. So it's going to be launching into Steam early access first. And then various updates are going to be coming in after that. So we have the first update, which will be introducing multiplayer. So the game will not release with multiplayer, but that is their first priority to have people running around in the world with you. The next update will be called The Breach, so that will introduce new areas, uh, new enemies, and new story. So further updates are to be announced in the future, and with console releases planned as well. And they did say that PvP will be coming in too at some point. I expect that will be in the uh, multiplayer update, but that might be just the focus for the co-op part of it, but um, we'll see what happens there. So that was the Wicked Showcase. Uh, we got a lot of details about the game. I am definitely hyped for this one. I'm going to be playing this uh, day one when it comes out and also be covering this game quite a bit when it comes to release. Uh, so be sure to subscribe for more No Rest for the Wicked content as the game comes, as we find more details as it comes out. And let me know what you think of this video. It's more of a general discussion video instead of the usual scripted type stuff be sure to like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe for more upcoming stuff on no rest for the wicked and uh yeah i'll see you in the next one